You vote for Trump, you're a devil too. He supports abortion too. He also supports homosex, homosexuals. Homosexuality is an abomination to God. And it'll always be an abomination. You can't transist. You transvestites, you can't transist into something else. God made you who you are. He didn't make you something that you can be somebody else. No, he wants you to be the young man or the young woman that he tends you to be, not something else. No, God wants you to be who you are. Abortion is not right in God's eyes. Abortion's wrong. Don't make two wrongs into a, try to make it into a right. Two wrongs don't make a right. Time to get right with God. The Bible is clear. It's clear about the condition of our nation. Condition of our nation is wicked. Very dark. So much darkness in this nation. People love darkness. They don't love the light. It exposes darkness. It expo exposes your sin. The Bible says wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ can give you eternal life. Bible says, Know you not, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicator, sex outside of marriage, nor uh, idolaters. You lift up a football team, you look at them more than you look at Christ Jesus, it's an idolatry. Yeah, football can be your idolatry. Yes, young man. That's right, man. That's right. It can be idolatry. Nor adulterers. Jesus said, if you have eyes of lust, you young men, you look at woman with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery already. And then we have porno, pornography, that's definitely a stench to God's nostrils. And this nation lifts it up. You can't even get on a phone without porno coming up. Or you can find anything you want to find. Wicked. They, our country is guilty before God of allowing this wickedness. It should be shut off. No, you're not going to watch any of that wicked stuff. They allow it to take place. You parents need to uh, teach your kids the way they should go, and when they get old, they shall not depart from it, the Bible says. But no, you allow your children to look at anything. Don't let them look at anything on, on their phones. No, you need to put some kind of protection on it. Yes, young ladies. You got a question? No. Okay. Yeah. You know, you, you, you parents, you parents, you don't teach your kids the way they should go, and and they get old and they go to hell. You're going to be in hell with them. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations will forget God. The wicked are the ones that live in sin. The wicked are one, the ones that watch porno, have fornication, have idolatry. Really? 
and it says, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, you sissy boys. You boys need a man up. Be the boy, be the young man that God intends you to be. Not be some limp-wrist sissy boy. Don't be a limp-wrist sissy boy. Be a young man. That's what God made you to be. He didn't make you to be effeminate, a young sissy boy. And it says, no abusers of themselves with mankind, homosexuals. God didn't make you a homosexual. Homosexuality is a perversion. This younger, this younger generation lifts it up. They cheer it on like it's something natural. It's not natural in God's eyes. I can prove it. I can go to Romans chapter 1. And it says that they change that natural use. The natural use of a man. Men with men, women with women, doing that which is unseemly is what the Bible says. Unseemly, wicked, perverted. That's what homosexuality is. It's a perversion. And yet the younger generation lifts it up like it's something natural. Thank you. No, it's not natural. It's wicked before God. God destroyed two nations because of, because of homosexuality. You ever heard of Sodom and Gomorrah? Fire and brimstone came down and destroyed two big cities. Two big cities got destroyed because of homosexuality. God was serious. God made woman for man. You're not going to change God's, God's way. God, God wants you to come and live for His Word, not for you to pervert His Word. No, you're not going to change God's Word. The Bible says, in Isaiah, look at your apps, Isaiah 40, verse 8. It says this, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of God shall stand forever. His Word will stand forever. You know, He wants you, He wants you young people to preach His Word. To be a witness for Him, young people. Don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me or my word, I'll be ashamed of you to the Father, is what He said. He said that then if you love Him, He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You keep His commandments? Yes. That's what you need to be doing, keeping His commandments. To love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And to love your neighbors yourself. He says, the, the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Yes, there's wisdom. Wisdom, what's wisdom? Yes. What's wisdom? Let's go to Job 28, 28. It says, the wisdom of God is the fear of God. The fear of God is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. That's what it says in Job 28, 28. Look it up in your Bible app or, or, or Google. That's what it says in Job 28, 28. Yes, the fear of God is wisdom. That's where you get wisdom. Is fearing God. Solomon said, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, people don't fear God anymore. If they fear God, they would fear, they would not be sinning, rebelling against God. Because sinning against God is rebelling against God. Because rebellion 
is as the spirit of witchcraft, is what the Bible says. Proverbs 16.6 6 says, By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, there it is, the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. The fear of God, you depart from evil. If you don't have the fear of God, you're not going to depart from evil. You're going to live just like the old sinner that you are. You know, what, you know what a sinner is? Somebody that sins. Jesus Christ doesn't want you to sin. The Bible says the wages of sin. The wages of sin is death. Death. Hell. That's what it means. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, what's his, what's his ultimate gift? Jesus Christ. The gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ wants you wants to give you eternal life. That's the good news. That's what the gospel is. The good news is Jesus Christ came and while we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. He wants to set you free of your sin. Not keep you bound in your sin. God forbid, Paul said. Why would you live in sin? No, you don't need to live in sin. Live for Jesus Christ. Be a cheerleader for Jesus Christ. Cheer for Jesus Christ. He deserves all the glory. All the honor, all the praise. How you doing? Jesus Christ deserves it. Yes. The Bible says, you, yeah, you can talk to him. The Bible says you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. That which is of the flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. You must be born again, Jesus Christ said. We have to be born of the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ said it's expedient that I leave, that I send the Holy Spirit that will reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. That's what can fix your heart when you're not living for God. That's your own conscience that tells you when you're doing wrong, your own conscience, which the Holy Spirit speaks to you, because the word, the Bible says, the word of God is put on every man's heart. You can say that you're an atheist, but but there's no atheism, no atheism. It's a figment of your imagination. Because my Bible says the Word of God is putting on every man's heart. It's on your heart. You can deny God. You can deny God all you want. But God still speaks to your, to your conscience. He still speaks to your heart. Will you listen? Will you listen before Jesus Christ splits the skies? Because Jesus said He's going to come back. He's coming back. He's made a promise he's coming back. He's coming back with flaming fire. Fire! Bringing vengeance, vengeance upon those that know not God and do not obey his gospel. That's how Jesus Christ is going to come back. Yes, he's going to come back as he's promised he's going to do. Do you realize that you see the moon? What's going to happen if one day you wake up and there's no sun. It's dark out like it is dark right now. Do you know that the Bible talks about that? It talks about that the sun is going to be turned into darkness. And it says that the, the moon will turn into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord comes. 
That's that's before he's coming, before he splits the skies, before he comes back as flaming fire. That's how he's going to come back. And that's that's going to be a sign that he's coming back because it's going to be dark. The sun's not going to shine. And at night, it'll be a blood moon. I can read it to you, Acts 2.11. It says this. Acts 2.11 says... We've, we've been thinking about you. Thank we've you, been officer. Praying, praying for you. And, uh, Acts 2.11 says this. It says, or 2.17, it says, And it came to, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out my... Out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Prophesying is telling you what's going to take place in the future. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon unto blood, before the great and the notable day of the Lord comes. That's how he, that's going to be a sign before he comes. Is the, the sun is not going to shine, it's going to be darkness. And it's going to be a blood moon. And then he's going to split the skies. And he's going to come back. Jesus Christ said he's coming back soon. He said he's coming back. Who knows what when he's going to come back? Nobody dies. And if they tell you they do, they're a liar. Because Jesus Christ said that no one would know. He said that we're to be ready. Um, oh,